Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Las Vegas for theCUBE, special presentation of the Cube show with John Furrier and Dave Vellante, where we extract the signal from the noise and share that with you on siliconangle.tv, on YouTube, on every channel we can possibly, we, we're even talking doing Snapchat stories, but uh, we'll get to that when we can. Dave, we're here for wrapping up day one of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Um, John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE, Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibomb. We're going we're to break it down, but first I want to just say that IBM has a digital experience uh, social lounge this year that is the same as last year, VIP influencers, and they brought the queue back, but they're bringing in a much more organic experience with interconnectgo.com website. Go to www.worldwideweb.interconnectgo.com or just interconnectgo.com. And we're trying to bring in the crowd into the experience and get a two-way dialogue as a new way to do things, a new way to be social, a new way to work, a new way to, to, to collaborate. And it's supposed to be fun. The keynotes are all there. The Cube interviews got some development videos. All access pass with special privilege. Go to Interconnect Go, Go Social. Check out the leaderboard. Um, and, and we'll be doing crowd chats in there as well. Of course, trending hashtags. The conversations are happening here on the show. We want you to be part of that. We're glad to uh, be, be part of that, Dave. Um, so Dave, getting to day one for IBM. It's clearly a sea change for IBM. Nothing new on the directional front. The vector is still the same, cloud, mobile, and social. You're seeing a sense of urgency now. You're starting to see the direction and some of the meat and the bone in terms of specific deliverables around cloud, DevOps underneath the hood, mobile and analytics. Clearly, it's the cloud. What's your take from day one? You're hearing storage is full commitment. We're hearing all about the blue mix. What's your take? Well, a couple things. So, this is IBM's biggest event that I know of, 20,000 people, combining interconnect and pulse, cloud, mobile, DevOps, and then pieces of infrastructure, you know, sort of around the periphery. Uh, 20,000 people, I know IBM has multiple conferences, no Ginny, kind of interesting, right? I mean, they, I didn't see it earlier, I don't think they even had a video feed of her. So that was a little bit surprising to me. Um, generally speaking, in other large companies, you get the top dog to come in, so I kind of would like to see, I'd like to hear from her. Right? I know she's busy, but these are all your customers here. So that's sort of point number one. Um, having said that, great action, awesome attendance. LeBlanc was really strong, I thought. Um, a lot of people questioned why they put Robert LeBlanc in charge of cloud. I think he demonstrated today why. He understands the business, he understands customers. I think he articulated an excellent vision. Uh, he talked about IBM's commitment, he really underscored that, and I've always said he's the type of person that can actually execute on something like that. Um, the other thing is developers. Really focus on developers. We've heard this for quite some time now from IBM. They are really emphasizing it, trying to put some meat on the bone there. We hear this from other companies, like you know, Oracle's Oracle's like, okay, developers, you know, you've got Java, you got to develop. HP talks about it. IBM really putting some concerted effort there. I think they really understand the importance of the developer piece, uh, particularly on the cloud. Um, and like I said, John, on the periphery, you've got these infrastructure trends that are going on with security. Uh, we heard from Jamie Thomas and Eric Herzog on the storage side. We heard from Doug Baylog on the Power 8. I think that was another really somewhat surprising development here. Um, not necessarily at the show, but leading up to the show. A hundred partners signed up for the Open Power Initiative, that's pretty good. It's not just a, you know, a bunch of Barney deals, like you call them. So, all in all, I think this is a um, very impressive showing by IBM. Yeah. Um, what yeah, are your Dave, take? Yeah, Dave, first, I think their new way is a great slogan. It's a great branding campaign. They can just fill in the blank. A new way to do social media, a new way to do the cube, a new way to do the social lounge, a new way to do analysts, a new way to find value, a new way to think. Unlimited potential. Love it, it's, it shines with a smarter planet, smarter infrastructure. Again, I love that. Key things that I heard today in theCUBE were 
listening to customers. The Blue Mix team, it's in the cloud and DevOps, it's all about listening to customers. Okay, software life cycles are changing, the user experience for customers. And three, under the hood. Three major areas in the cloud, UX customer experience matters and expectations and what the design is. Software life cycles are very agile, sprint, scrum, whatever you want to call it, and under the hood, it's got to be scalable and more service oriented and modular, very cloud-like. We also heard about some of the live sync stuff that Amazon doesn't have. So Lumix is thinking, oh, we'll do stuff Amazon doesn't do. And then we heard uh, virtualization that developers love. But I got to tell you, Doug Baylog was my favorite interview because mm. he really was awesome. Um, Eric Herzog was, I'd say, maybe tied for first, <laughs> maybe second, short second place. But Doug, um, Power Systems, really nailed it. He was candid, he was sharp, he was quick. Obviously, first day we get the executives, they're, they're tight. He was good. I loved what he said. I asked him a question. What is the conversation that we could join or start or advance around the core themes in the industry that the IBM's participating? He said, they are three things. The drowning in data is a top conversation. The insights, et cetera, big data. Two, the cloud services delivery equation on-prem or in the cloud. Conversation number two. Conversation number three, ecosystem, open source, building it out, expanding it, aligning it, unifying it, integrating it, and growing that. Three things, that was my favorite sound bite in terms of high level. My second favorite sound bite was Eric Herzog who said, a new world data structures. That highlights my data ocean vision that we've been talking about on theCUBE. Data lakes are great for batch, systems of record, but if you want to win the systems of engagement battle, in my opinion, it's about the new world data structures, some that some have never seen before. New ripped currents, new, 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 new ways of doing things. That's about transformation. So to me, that's key. Spectrum storage, a lot of great stuff. Again, blue mix, it's all about the cloud. So that's kind of my take. New world data structures, and again, those three things, drowning in data, on-prem, delivery, and ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, the IBM playbook's kind of predictable here. Right, you know what they're going to do is basically take everything that they have, aim it at the cloud, enable it for the cloud, put it in the cloud. Like for instance, you talked about power for the cloud. Um, you're talking about everything blue mix. You're talking about blue acceleration everywhere, DB2, you know, everywhere. IBM's going to put that behind the curtain, of course. Um, and so, you know, that it's going to be more of the same for IBM. Now, to me, what I'm watching is execution. Can IBM? Stave off, you know, they've got, they've got the currency headwinds that they're dealing with. Uh, obviously they've got competition, we know that. Um, we've got a, a, an industry in transition. Can they get the new stuff growing, can maintain that growth rate, get it big enough? I mean, it's a you know, 20 plus billion dollar business growing at you know, double digits, good, strong, solid mid-teens. Can they keep that growing at 10 to 20% a year and stop the, yeah. the, the decline on the other side of the business, if they can do that, IBM will bounce off the bottom from a revenue standpoint, start growing again, and as I've said earlier this morning, continue to throw off tons of cash. I got to ask you about Stefan Ferber, who's the Vice President of Engineering at Bosch Software. Customer, practitioner, what'd you take? I liked him. One, well, I like the alignment of my data ocean vision, but he was good, he was good, global, they're called themselves a startup of 600 people. 600 so, people. What you I mean, that was a pretty, I mean, yeah. hearing the customers talk. Uh, that was excellent. I mean, I, I, I mean, you think about GE's industrial internet, industrial internet, you know, turbines, you know, big iron, right? Whereas Bosch, you think dishwashers, you know? Smart home. <laughs> Smart home. That, I think, resonates really well with consumers, with a lot of people. Uh, I learned a lot in that interview. I think that um, it was interesting. They're making acquisitions, uh, very German-centric, which you would expect. But they've made, you know, inroads certainly into the United States uh, markets and other markets, you know, overseas in AP as well. Obviously, very strong in Europe. So global company, sixty billion dollar type of turnover. So yes. Great example, John, of, uh, of a real internet of things. Started in 2005, that initiative. Okay, so they're just not, a, they're not IOT washing. So talk about what happened to us. We had some, a lot of crowd chats. They will summarize some of those. The InterConnect Go site was fantastic. Um, Stu Miniman introduced some new uh, research on the crowd chat. Um, the infrastructure as a service um, data. What's your take on that? I know you were multitasking, peeking in on Stu's a chat with uh, Tim Crawford. 
um, VIP influencer here at IBM. Held a great chat, not big numbers in terms of you know, drawing in the big crowd, but the data was pretty good. Well, the, the survey underscored to me in the data that we, we are now entering the next big wave of, of cloud. The first wave was you know, EC2, just check it out. The second wave was the economy tanks, and all the CFO said, all right, CapEx to OpEx, go develop on, on AWS. The third wave, bouncing out of that uh, downturn, John, was shadow IT. And that was the wake up call for the cartel. The cartel went, whoa, this is real. Shadow IT is threatening our base. We need to do something. In the case of IBM, it's we need to buy software and we need to get our act together and really go all in on the cloud. And that's what happened. The second thing that really it underscores for me is that it's game on. So you got Amazon, Microsoft, and yet even Google um, as scale guys that are not going away and the gauntlet has been thrown down and the enterprise guys are really finally getting their act together and I think led by uh, IBM, Oracle, you know, HP is you know, finally got a product out there, but IBM really is in a good position because of its large global footprint, its outsourcing business. They did two deals last quarter, over a billion dollars, uh, outsourcing deals that heavily involve the cloud, so they can use that footprint to leverage their cloud business. Yeah, they're throwing some stuff in there, the kitchen sink gets thrown in you know, to their cloud numbers, that's fine, however they want to count it. Uh, but it's very clear that they have laser focus on that cloud business. And so that's kind of what the data underscored to me. It's just those two worlds, the enterprise world and the consumer world, they're finally colliding together, John. Yeah, Dave, I just want to wrap up day one by saying that great event by IBM. Again, putting the events together was a good call by IBM. Two big global, two big, big tent events so you can get all the customers into one place. That's the theme, you know, you're seeing it with Oracle Open World, certainly you see it with like Salesforce, Dreamforce, other events, um, great leverage. Um, so good call. Um, there's still got a lot of other events, small, you know, mid-tier events going on, so that'd be good. But you're right, Dave. I would have liked to have seen the CEO here. Uh, we had Bob Picciano, one of our favorite guests, couldn't make it. He wanted to be on, but was stuck on a plane. We hope to see him uh, next couple of days if he's got time. But again, these execs are, are strapped. Usually we get them on theCUBE, but we love the fact that they come on theCUBE, especially when their schedules are so packed with customer um, meetings. So uh, I want to thank the IBM execs. I think I want to thank the VIP influencers. I have really learned a lot from them. Brian Fonzo, <laughs> Veronica Belmont, a bunch of other great people here. Uh, Chris here was here. A bunch of great social awesome people who are smart, talented, and are great ambassadors for the industry because they're not work, they don't work for IBM, Dave. I'm impressed with those influencers. I think what IBM's doing with VIP influencers is the new way to do things in social. Creating a community, an ecosystem, is part of the open source community that's changed business, technology, and bringing that open source ethos to social media and social business is brilliant. I think, I think IBM's onto something really huge with this, and what they're doing here with Go Social, this lounge, and the digital experience uh, that we're part of is fantastic, and obviously CrowdChat's part of that. We're super psyched. Go to crowdchat.net, check out the sites there, go to the Cube page, go to interconnectgo.com and check out all the action, live feeds, on-demand videos, all access paths uh, with registration, uh, keynotes with registration, but everything else is free, free content. Go to interconnectgo.com and check out that out. This is the Cube. Any final parting words, Dave, you want to say before we wrap it up for well, day Well, we're just getting started here, John. I know we got uh, two more days of cloud and, and mobile. Uh, like I said, a little bit of, of social and, and analytics thrown in. Um, we've got some great guests coming up tomorrow. Uh, there's the, the action going on at the MGM. Aerosmith is playing, I think, tomorrow night, right? Uh, tomorrow night, Aerosmith playing. I'm not going to miss um, that. I'm not going to miss we that We usually one. don't go to the show. I love Aerosmith. I think, you know, <laughs> that was one of the first concerts I ever saw. It was Aerosmith at Millis High School. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you're dating yourself. I know, it's, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're back in the saddle, here in the Cube tomorrow morning. <laughs> Couldn't resist. We'll be, there. Um, we'll be back tomorrow, stay with us. Wall to wall coverage for you, this is the Cube. Signing out for day one, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, Thanks, this is the Cube, live in Las Vegas, instructing the noise, IBM Interconnect Go. See you tomorrow.